All right, there's no going back. Once we start cutting, this is a one-way trip. What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna stuff this 24 inch radiator and a dual electric fan setup in my 66 Mustang. Let's see if it fits. So what normally fits in the 65, 66 Mustang is a 16 inch radiator. And really it's sufficient for most of what people are gonna do. Uh, I'm doing a little bit something different with my motor. I need a little bit more cooling capacity. It might be overkill, but I did wanna upgrade my system so I wasn't at least you know, gonna be short on the cooling options. The problem what we have with these cars is the way this, this core support is cut out is it, it's not set up for a 24 inch radiator. I think the 67, um, they opened it up to a 22 inch or something like that. So you have a lot more options with those, with those cars. But with this one, we're gonna have to cut this core support to make it fit. So from here, you can see the opening here in the core support from the front of the car it goes from here to here, and that's not enough. And if we try to drop in a 24 inch radiator, you can already see that it is a much larger system than the cutout. In fact, so much so that we're gonna have to go to the extremes of this kind of punched out, you know, this formed place of the, core, of the course board. We're gonna have to go all the way to the edge on both sides to get this guy to fit. So here's another angle of, you know, if we, I got my, the overflow tank in the way, but what if, if I were to move it, you'd see that basically the end of the, uh, of the radiator is right in line with this stamped part on the core support. So I'm gonna cut right up to this edge and we may cut all the way to the front here, but I think we're gonna start here and see how that works and cut back here if we need to. And before I get any farther, yes, I am gonna be cutting my core support. Some of you guys are not wild about cutting up the car. This car, this build is, I'm not doing a full restoration with, you know, original part. I'm, I'm going a different route with this car. So it's gonna take some modification of the car to do what I wanna do. Now, is this radiator too big for the, the motor I'm putting in here? Possibly. Would an 18 inch or 20 inch radiator do just fine? It, it might. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was have a dual fan set up. And with the distance from the radiator to the water pump and a single fan, there's just not a lot of options out there without either cutting up the core support to move the radiator farther away. Um, there, there's just not a lot of room and I, I just don't like how close everything is. I didn't have a problem with my previous setup with the electric fan. On the previous car, I had an electric fan. I didn't have a problem there. I would like to go to dual fan setup because then the motors for the fans are offset from the center of the motor where the water pump sticks out and the pulley and all that kind of stuff. So this is just one of the reasons why I wanna to go to a dual fan setup, but I also want the larger radiator for the cooling capacity of this motor. Again, it's, it's more, it's not really future proofing, but just uh, anticipating the build as this car progresses that I would like to have enough cooling capacity for this motor. So what is the fan option that I'm gonna go with? I've read online that this is actually a popular modification. Uh, the people take the, what is it, the 99 to 04 Ford Contour V6 radiator fan setup. I guess it's a popular option. Uh, if you're trying to save a few bucks, um, you know, I could have spent $400 on buying some FAL fans uh, for this, this, this radiator or less than $100 and I get this. If this thing ends up not doing, you know, doing its job, if it's crap, I'm out less than a hundred bucks, then I can figure out what I want to do from there. But this is definitely something for those that are budget minded. What can you do? This thing is, is shaped, you know, it's sized so that it almost fits. We're going to have to trim off these ears on here because these are the way you would mount it up in the Ford Contour. I don't have a setup. If you want to fabricate a way to, to support this fan setup by using these, that might be a good option for you, but I don't have that kind of equipment to fabricate something like that. I'm going to have to cut off some stuff off the bottom here. And then this comes with a built-in thermostat to, to help trigger the fans when you need it. I've got that thermostat in the water, uh, the thermostat housing on my motor. I'm gonna go with that one versus this contact type. You know, this rests up against the radiator and it'll go through, you know, convection. It'll, it'll, it'll sense the, the high temp in the radiator, kick the fans on. I'm gonna go with something that's actually, temp, you know, probing the temperature of the coolant itself to trigger the fans. Is this sufficient? Probably, but I'm gonna go with what I already had set up. It's already wired for that, so I'm not gonna need that. We'll just leave this the way it is. I'm not gonna need it. Another thing I did need to buy are the plugs that go in here. As these plugs don't come with the, the, the fans themselves, unfortunately they're kind of expensive for what they are, uh, but it does allow me to just plug right in. I don't have to set up some sort of 
spade connection or something and make it look, you know, so this looks more OEM when you got this kind of setup. So I like that. So let's take a little quick look at how this is gonna fit on the radiator and what I'm gonna to have to modify. So if this is the back side of the radiator where you know, the motor is on this side where we're gonna have our coolant hoses, that's uh, something you have to pay attention if you're gonna buy this. Some have the, uh, the passenger side uh, tube you know, location on here, some of them have the driver's side, so you have to pay attention to that when you're buying these uh, for, for your car and for, your, for however your water pump is set up. So for to put this on here, it almost fits just how it is. Uh, there's a tab down here that's just, I'd have to, to modify that a little bit and I got to cut this tab off the top and it almost just kind of falls in and it'll almost rest kind of on this edge here and on both sides. And so what I'll do is I'll just make some brackets or something to modify to, to, to grab the, the edge of this and just bolt it maybe with the hole there. I'll just get like an L bracket or something, make something simple I can get at the hardware store and and, and make this attached to that. So this will be pretty easy to modify to make it fit. Plus it clears the coolant hoses, you know, where they would reach here. We don't have anything in the way with that, which is out, which is great. So to get this core support ready for us to cut it up, I need to get the horns out of the way. I already took the one out here because it was attached to the way the, the radiator was set up, but we still need to get this one out of the way. I got to get the overflow tank out of the way because we're going to cut this area off and we're probably pretty much going to come right down this edge here. So this is all going to have to go away. And same thing on this side, we're just going to cut along this edge for right now and see if this, uh, see how much as we have to cut up to, to make this fit. If we need to, we'll go all the way to the front of the core support, but I think, I think we can make it work with this. Now we can get a better idea of how this is gonna fit in here. So this is pretty wide. It's a it's really wide system. So unfortunately, you know, something like this, a 22 inch would probably be a better radiator, but the dual fan setup is hard to do on a 22 inch. You just have smaller fans or less efficient. So that's why I went with the 24. So we won't be utilizing, at least the air won't be getting to the full 24 inches, but at least uh, it'll still work. So to cut this out, again, I'm gonna cut along this edge here. I'm gonna put some blue tape. It's probably, it's probably over, I probably don't need it. Um, but what I wanna do is just make sure I got a good straight line. Now the way this thing is formed, you could just follow this edge and you probably would be fine. But just for the sake of, uh, for those that say you should do it anyways, let's go ahead and do it anyways. Now as it gets towards the top here, I think for now I'm just gonna follow this edge over and then down um, I think that's what I'll do for now. We'll see how that comes out. And then we're gonna cut along the bottom here too. So it'll be pretty much this opening that we already have, just wider. All right, there's no going back. Once we start cutting, this is a one-way trip. All right guys, that came out pretty good. You know, I got to clean up these edges. You know, there's some sharp metal pieces that we got to get all that cleaned up. Uh, but for the most part, uh, let's, it looks pretty good. Let's see how the radiator fits. All right, dropping this in here. Oh yeah, so I do notice that uh, this, this voltage regulator, I got to move this over a little bit uh, for this to be, for the radiator to be centered. But if we just kind of use what we do have available to us right here, um, See, this is about how it would sit. Um, it would be over that way, just a you know half inch or something like that. But this is it, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this. I'm not gonna cut this edge anymore. Um, I'm, I'm gonna leave that the way it is, partly because it kind of puts the radiator at an angle, um, and uh, I don't know if that's what we need. But that's how the stock radiator was set up, 
And then um, radiator cap and everything being as high as it is, I don't know how it's gonna clear the hood. And that's, I guess, maybe a problem for future Andy. Uh, I wanna get the hood put back down here. But uh, I know that for the most part, this will work. I'm also, after I clean this up, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some like quarter inch uh, tubing or, or not tubing, I'm um, like uh, hose. And I'm gonna just put a slit down it and then I'm just gonna use it as like a, uh, like a gasket or whatever. I'm just gonna put it on this edge and that way the rubber will ride on the, the fins here instead of the fins getting hit by this metal edge. And even though I'm gonna clean this up, I, I think I, I'll do that. That'll put a nice little trim ring around this thing and, and clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna get the uh, voltage regulator moved over and then get these edges cleaned up. And while the paint's drying on that core support, let's go ahead and get these ears cut off and these tabs and stuff cut off and get this prepped to fit onto the radiator. All right, let's go ahead and test fit this now. So this thing is sitting, just misses the inside rails of, of these side, you know, these mount points. So, you know, could you trim this a little bit to make that fit? I think we could, um, but I'm going to just go ahead and center the best I can. And now I wanna make some brackets that are gonna hold this to the radiator. What I'm gonna use or just some of these standard, you know, like L bracket things or whatever you can get at the hardware store. And the nice thing is, is they're ready to go. They're only, they're, what are they, one inch on each side here. And they've got two holes on one side. And so I'll use these to, to attach the plastic part to this here. And then I'm going to draw a hole, drill a hole in the center for the holes on the mount for these to, to hold on there. So this would be something like that roughly in this area like that and we'll do the same thing on this side so i'm going to go ahead and get those holes drilled and get it ready to mount Now that we got these brackets on, let's see how it fits. Do a little quick test here. Make sure everything lines up. Yeah, everything looks good. You know, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and bolt this to the radiator, but first I need to get the radiator mounted to the car. So let's step over and get those holes drilled to mount the radiator to the core support. Before I stick this radiator in there, I'm gonna put some of these little, you know, soft rubber pads on the bottom here so that the radiator is actually sitting on these rubber pads. On the, on the frame there, and then I can get the right height for the bolts. Um, this way, 
this isn't sitting on the metal and this is rubbing on the metal as a car drives. It'll be sitting on these and then bolted to the core support. It's kind of hard to tell, but actually this, this rail right here is actually what's touching the radiator and not the cutout like I thought it was gonna be. So really you only need to rub, put a, that, like that rubber hose I'm gonna put on here as a kind of a gasket. You only need to put it on this top rail because that's the only thing that the radiator is hitting on. Same thing on this other side, it just, just touches that spot and nowhere else. But we're gonna go ahead and trim the whole opening with that rubber hose, but interesting to know that that's, that's one place that it, that it hits. All right, I've got this radiator centered about as good as I can. So because the distance from here to the core support is kind of a long ways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to see if I can mark on there where the bolts would come through. It's not really the best way because I wish I had like a the right pencil or something, but I can't even get through this front flange because if I can't go through here, can't reach everything, so I know that it's roughly in this area here. So I know that it's gonna be this height. So we're gonna have to drill a little hole right here. That one's marked pretty good. But this one, and then we'll do the other side. That'll do it, that'll get everything mounted there. You can't really see it very well, but uh, yeah, bolts fit, everything lines up. I think we can go ahead and, and trim out this, this open area with the rubber hose now. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna kinda roughly measure out how much we need of this stuff. And then I can just cut it to length and then I'll just split down the, the side of it so that it'll just kind of wrap and, and fit onto the sheet metal here, of the core support. And I'm going to cut it just a little bit long, just in case. Yeah, they didn't come out too bad. I think we're gonna be all right. Uh, it's not it's not the best thing, but it's definitely you know an option, particularly if uh, if you want to save a couple bucks. All right, let's see how this thing fits in there now. With oh yeah, so it does push the radiator away from the core support by maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that, which isn't hurting anything. Uh, but I do like that it kind of seals you know, where this is at and, you know, it looks like we were trying anyway, so that's good. Um, all right, I think we can go ahead and, well, I don't want to mount this yet because I still got to mount the reservoir, uh, that overflow reservoir right here on the side. Since I can't put it on the other side because the voltage regulator is there, I'm going to put it right here. And I want to put this overflow tank right in this area, but what I don't want is, see, if I put it against the, the core support, this cap is kind of underneath this lip and I don't want that. I want to space it out a little bit so I can actually get to the cap. So I'm gonna, I made this out of just some aluminum one inch square tubing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here and roughly right about there where I'm gonna drill the holes for the screws that'll hold this tubing to the core support and then the overflow tank will be mounted to this. And we're just gonna use some sheet metal screws. All right, those are ready to go now. I think I'm gonna paint this first. 
uh, and then get it, I can get it set up for the core support, or get it set up for the overflow tank. And while we let that mount for the overflow thing dry, let's go ahead and test fit this up and make sure that everything looks good here. All right guys, I think I'm gonna change the plans here on how I'm gonna mount this. If you can see, see how the radiator and the, the fan mount just aren't, the, the fan's not even, it's sitting like outside of the radiator. And I think I'm gonna cut the plastic on the radiator fan, the, the electric fan, so that it sits onto the radiator core itself. Right now, you know, it's just sitting away from it. So, and I only have to trim, so you can see just, how much I have to trim there, just the very edge of it, and I think it would sit down. So I'm gonna modify that real quick. That's gonna change my brackets a little bit, so I'll have to figure that out. Um, but I think I want this, this fan to sit up against the core and uh, seal it a little bit better. So guys, all I did is I just took the jigsaw and I just cut a 3 8 inch strip off the end of this thing here. And see, you can see it got really close to where my bolt holes were for the bracket, so I'm gonna have to figure out something else. But just taking those strips off there, and then you can see how it's just, it's just a little bit inboard. So I think we're gonna, I think this will be all right. Let's just do a little test fit, see how it comes out. All right, let's drop this in here. Yeah, you can see it already fits better already. It's right here at the beginning, so that's good. And then if we bring this all the way up, yeah, this fits, kind of hard to see here, but it fits a lot better now. And then I'll put that rubber hose on the end of this piece here to kind of create the same kind of gasket we did with the front of the radiator. And that'll suck this up close to the core itself and get this thing a little, you know, and it also gave me an extra 3 eighths of an inch clearance between here and the water pump uh, with the motor. Because without the motor in here, I don't know where everything clears. So, cool. Now I just got to fix the brackets. All right, guys, I was able to get those brackets done. I had to drill some new holes. And actually, you know, there's not a lot of meat in this plastic to grab to, to, for these brackets to hold on to. So if you guys have a better idea for this, you know, it might be something to look into. Uh, but they are holding, and I got all four of them on there, and I got that rubber seal along here to help seal up this fan. So if we put this kind of in the bottom there, and we move it up, there, it kind of clicked into place. You really can't see, but it is fitting. A lot. Now I like that bracket, I gotta straighten that out. But for the most part, you can see that it's all, it's all in there and everything lines up. So we can go ahead and put the bolts in. And I think this, uh, I think we, I'm glad I fixed this fan. I think this is gonna be a lot better, yeah. All right, guys, this is a good place to stop. I still need to finish mounting this fan to the radiator, but I need to take the radiator out so that I can put the motor back in, so there's no point in finishing that out. Also, I haven't finished the wiring for the electric fan. I still have some wiring I need to do in here, so I kind of have to cut this film short a little bit just because, again, I can't try this thing out because I don't have the motor in here. Um, but when I get the motor put in, then we can see if it all fit and everything works out good. Um, so we're good there. So guys, that's it. Yeah, you can fit a 24 inch radiator in here and then we found that we can make this dual fan set up. I mean, this is not a surprise. This is not something new that people have done, um, but we do a little bit of trimming. We can make it fit and I think we should be good. So guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out and we'll see you in the next one.